This is the output that you can expect by using this auto blogger. As you can see, we have internal links, we have lists, we have product images, etc., etc. Now, one thing is the articles aren't that long. They're 419 words. But as I've shown in the past, these articles do rank pretty well anyway. So this is the first auto blogger that I've seen and definitely the first free one that you can use that uses the assistance API. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up and exactly how to use it. So we're going to be using GitHub. So I'll leave a link to this GitHub in the description and you're going to need Visual Studio Code. You're going to need Python and you're going to need something called Git as well. You can get all of that on Google. So if you want to get Git, in order to use Git, you just need to go on Git download and download it basically. It's pretty simple. Anyway, I'm not going to go too in detail in how to set everything up, like the, the minutiae, like the small parts, but I'm just going to focus on the big parts. So what do we want to do? We want to click on these three terminal, new terminal, and then we're going to write git clone and then control V and then you can write anything here. Uh, and that is the name of the file. So we'll press enter here. You'll see this will then clone and then you want to do CD anything here. So whatever you call the file. We're now inside that file, so we're going to open that file as well. So yeah, click on open folder and then click on the folder and then press select folder. So we now have this on the side. So I'm going to show you how to do everything, how to set up everything, etc, etc. So this is the readme that I made for this. So the step, first step is the products. This is mainly for e-commerce. I haven't done a non-e-commerce version just yet. What you need is presuming you're on Shopify is you want to go to your sitemap.xml. Okay. And then, um, control C control V the products sitemap. So now we're on the product sitemap, right click, save as, and then you want to save the XML and then shown folder, drag this over to your, um, visual studio code window. You can delete this one, which is the current one. Actually, before we delete it, right click, uh, copy relative path. So then we'll delete this and then we'll re rename your sitemap exactly as the old sitemap was called, or you can change the script. Okay. If you know what you're doing with programming and then you don't need to listen to this part anyway. Okay. So what does this do? This is basically a way to just get 200 random products. So I'm going to click terminal, new terminal like this. You're going to need Python. So we'll do Python two men test dot pi. What this will do is it'll just give 200 random items from your store and it will just list them like this. The reason that we need these, I'll show you right now is because if I go to products.txt, you'll see that's exactly what that is. So you can just go to my products.txt, click inside control a and then control V the ones that you just copied from down here and then press control S to save. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to look for the yellow Python, click on the foot before the first URL here and then just drag it all the way down. Okay. Make sure you copy them all like that. And then control A, control V, control S to save. So that's your product done. That's all you need to do for that. The second step is keywords. Now I've just, I've got a very, very specific way of doing this. Again, you can change these if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you know what you're doing coding wise. I would just leave them as they are. You can take my example and you can say, do this for X niche or do this with these keywords. I'll leave this history, the chat history right here. So all I did was said, following the CSV pass pattern, I want you to output a content plan using these keywords. So you can just triple click on the first line here, control C, and that'll give you these here. And I'll also share this uh, link right here. But basically I just got a load of keywords from Google ads keyword planner from a competitor and then just asked it to format them. It gave me a weird formatting and I said it needs to be formatted like this and then gave an example. So again, you can just copy a little bit more. So first four lines, if you want to give it a proper example, and then it understood the assignment and it gave me this, you can then press copy right here. And then again, inside this folder, right? Uh, this file to men, it blog content plan expanded. If you know what you're doing, you can change that. But if you don't know what you're doing with code, then do not change the name of these files. Control A, Control V, that should put your 
content plan inside the um, CSV. Now, like I said, this only writes 400 words, more or less, right now. I could make it do 1,200 or something, but I think for now, I'm just going to keep it simple with just doing 400 keywords. Now, one of the only other things we have to do is get the internal links. So again, we go to two men, uh, dot it slash sitemap dot XML, and we'll copy collections this time. And then I actually have a Chrome extension called sitemap to clipboard that when I click here, oops, when I click here and press start, it will actually give me the collections. Okay. Now, since I started recently basically using um, HTTPS in front of this, you will probably have to add HTTPS to the front of each of these. So another way you can do it instead of using sitemap to XML is you can do control A and then control C inside the collection sitemap and then control A, control V inside the um, Google Sheet, change it to black, right click here on um, the A cell, uh, sorry, the A row column, the A column, and press uh, sort by Z to A, and then do a search for lock, and then look for all the collections like this, scroll down, so click on the first one, scroll all the way down to the last one, control C, control A, Control V and then Control F, press three, these three buttons, find LOC and replace it, find slash LOC and replace it. You now have all your internal links and then you need to put this in a text file. So let's just scroll down. Once you've copied all of the links, then you can open a notepad here. Or actually, you don't have to. You can just go into the Visual Studio Code window, go to internal links, press Control A, and then Control V. Okay, that's basically all the setup you need. Now you're going to need as well OpenAI. So you've got to do pip install OpenAI. If you already have it, then you have to do dash dash upgrade. Okay, so depending on whether you have it or not, if you already have it and it's an earlier version, you will need to upgrade the version. But if you already if you don't already have it, then if you do pip install OpenAI, then it will just install it. You'll probably need to install these dependencies as well. So you can just do pip install OS and then pip install TQDM, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the last thing we need is the OpenAI key. But before we get into that, actually, let's talk a little bit about, well, let's get the OpenAI key first. So go on your thing, click uh, API key, get in your secret key, create key. I will be deleting this key after this video, so please don't try and use it. It's pointless. It will be deleted. We're going to be using testing three. Testing two is a slightly less advanced model, but just see what works for you. Okay, so what I want to talk about now is how to change the prompting. Now, I wouldn't really recommend doing this necessarily unless you know what you're doing. Okay, but if you just look for where it says extractions equal, okay, so you, you click inside this square here and press control F and then control V. This right here is the prompt. Well, actually this isn't the prompt. This is the uh, instructions, but yeah, it's basically a prompt. So what happens is you, when you run Python testing three dot pi, the first thing that happens is it uploads to, it uploads the assistant. Okay. And you can see all of these assistants that I've been playing around with. So that's the first thing it does after that. It then chooses five internal links and five product URLs for the blog post from the blog post idea. Okay. And the blog post idea is right here where it says blog post idea and it's best men's t-shirt brands. So what it does is it looks for relevant internal links and relevant product images. And that's this one right here where it says get underscore request. You can see get underscore request equals F. So if you do control F and then look for that. You can see this is the second prompt. Again, you can change this. So for example, mine does say for exotic, for exotic leather shoes, look for crocodile shoes, etc. For suit articles, look for suits. You can change that for your niche if you want. Although I'm hoping that it's going to be universal for everyone. The next one is that it creates the outline. So now we're going to look for outline underscore request equals F, which is right here. And you can change this around as well. But what this does is it creates an outline using the product images and the internal links that the last one chose. 
and then it, yeah it just basically creates the outline I, again like i said i wouldn't necessarily recommend messing around with this stuff but you can if you want the final one is article request which it then writes the article to be honest this is probably the only one that i would play around with just to get you know whatever kind of output you want and then we could do another uh, call and we could say write the first half of the article here and then write the second half of the article here. The only reason I haven't done that is because the output is kind of weird with these articles. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to be leaving a way to automate the upload of these articles either because I truly, truly believe that one part of this is actual manual check to make sure that everything is okay. Now you could very easily just, you know, make a WordPress uploader or a Shopify uploader. I don't recommend you do that. I recommend that you do exactly like I'm going to show you in this video. So right now we're going to do Python testing 3.py and it will start writing. You've seen the exact setup. I just set up everything in front of you. Okay. So if this doesn't work, then I'm going to be a little bit disappointed, but it should just work straight out of the box. No worries. The way that you make the content unique is you change the content plan. Okay. So let's say you want to do, you've got a completely different niche. All you have to do is ask ChatGPT to give you a different content plan. Okay. So let's say you're writing about watchers. You can say, give me content plan for watchers. As long as this format doesn't change, it's no issue. You can write about basically any topic. So let's go on the assistance right here and we'll refresh. And you'll see that the last one was made at 1202, which it is 1202. If we click on here, sometimes the files don't show up um, if it's like a new upload. So if I go on this one, for example, you can see there are files. But if I go on this one, there are no files. It's just this bug. I don't know why it does this. But you can see, just like I sh we talked about a few weeks ago, you create the assistant with these instructions. You can definitely make these instructions more in detail if you wanted. And again, that's uh, this part of the script. It's at the very top. If you do um, instruct, if you just look for the word instructions, you'll see it right here. So you can change this. My original uh, assistant that we were using for a while had much, much longer instructions. Okay, so we can see here we have our first outline, and the way this works is it uses sources and annotations um, to basically tell the next one, which is the article writer which products to use. However, this doesn't work 100%. There are a couple of problems with this auto blogger. The first one is, I don't think you can leave it to do hun hundreds of articles. I would only do five to 10 articles at a time because the way it's structured is that it like builds up the context window because it includes the last article, uh, all, the, all of the last articles in the context of the next article. I'm trying to work on that. I think that testing 3.py doesn't do that, but again, just be really, really careful because if you're using 1106, I accidentally spent $200 today on 20 articles. Every article should cost about a dollar. If you run five to 10 articles at a time, that's how much it will cost. It will cost five to $10. So do not leave it overnight, okay? One of the other problems it has is that sometimes when it includes images in the article, they're not always fully relevant to the business or to that specific article. However, in general, it does do a pretty good job of that now. So you can see right here, title, top t-shirt brands. So we're looking for t-shirts. We're gonna open some of these files and we're gonna hope that they are t-shirts. That's one t-shirt and two t-shirts. Beautiful, that's kind of a t-shirt. And then we'll see if there are any internal links here. Normally there are internal links. Yeah, I can see one right here. So this is an internal link to our t-shirts category. You can see this is such a good way to automate content, okay? So now what you can do is you can do one or two things. You can wait for the whole output or you can do what I've been doing, which is just copying this right here, going across to ChatGPT. And you might ask, why is this better than just using ChatGPT front end? It's because it does all of the research and all of the gathering products and all of the gathering internal links and naturally puts them already into the article. And it's about your business. It's about your product. So all I've been saying is, can you format this article properly? You could probably do a better prompt here to make it do, you know, certain other things like maybe making a table, etc. But you can see right here, this should just perfect embed the products in Markdown. Let's see. There we go. 
And then all you want to do is you just want to press copy here. And guess what? You have a fully formatted article. And while you're scheduling this one, guess what? This one has now written the second outline and it's about to come up with the second article. Now, this is why I recommend not automating everything is because you have to delete some of these extra bits that ChatGPT inevitably includes. However, overall, we've got an article with only two, yeah, no, two internal links, three internal links, four internal links, it looks like, which is amazing. And then two product images. And remember, this was fully automated, which is pretty crazy, to be honest with you. Okay, so now we have our second article. And this is going to be the last one we look at. <clears throat> so we'll just grab this, go back to ChatGPT and say, do the same for this article. And this one is best men's fashion picks of 2024. And we have another image, beautiful. Another image, absolutely beautiful. Another beautiful image, another beautiful image, another image. As you can see, guys, this is what I've been working on. I've probably put about 75 hours into this um, project. So please help me get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Like, comment, and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.